G'day guys. I thought I'd put together a build video. This is the build of uh, the PC9 from Unique Models. I've uh, imported a bunch of these and spares and made them available on eBay. Check them out at MadRC. Links in the description. Uh, but some of you guys uh, want to know what you're getting and know how easy it is to get together. Uh, so I thought I'd do a quick build video, uh, show you all the parts and pieces you get with the kit, with the uh, with the model, and see how easy it goes together. The instructions you get are fairly brief, just some general information about the plane, and then really just a pictorial instruction with some broken English. I'll be trying to follow as close uh, to their instructions as possible and let you know if there's any hiccups on the way. So it looks like we're getting started with the wings. Alright, so here's the first step with the wings. And with the wings, uh, it comes pre-fitted with the retracts and they are plugged in. And here also we have a Y connector with a harness that's long enough to run down to your servos. So you want to make sure you fit those in and also to dry fit in the servo. Make sure you got that centered up first of course and just make sure that all meets up in the right spot. I like to have my hand underneath the foam and then just to give it a nice push because we are going to run the, the hatches over the top to cover that just to make sure it's flush before I glue it in. So we'll just put a little dab on there. And that's that. And of course the same on the other side. One tip I might say before you get the plug into the slot here is that the wire from the retract you should push up just to the side of the slot. That gives that the chance to get and bottom out all the way into the bottom of the foam and give you a smoother profile. And we can continue to run the rest of that wire in the slot. Okay, so now with the servos installed, it's time to attach these the horns. Uh, one on top, one underneath. Be sure not to over tighten and compress the phone down too much. One thing you might need to do on the servo arm is just pick the hole and just run your hobby knife, just enlarge it just enough to get a, a neat fit. and then into the corresponding hole on the horn. We can adjust those in a minute. And then the same on the other side. So the instructions has these with the heads on the other side. Uh, I don't really like that sticking out on the top. 
so what I'm going to do is, is I'm actually going to put the heads on the top. I did do them the other way, but uh, I just think it would be better with the head on top. And I think it still will bite enough into the plastic to keep that all held together in the foam. Then we'll just have the heads on top. Now with all four of those screws with the heads up, I think that's a much nicer look on top. And underneath, it's not really going to be that noticeable with the screws coming through. So finishing touches on the servo is the servo cover. And just with a little bit of glue. And we'll repeat that on the other side. So now with all of the cables routed through the slots, uh, the next thing is just to take a little bit of this paint off just to rough up the surface before you get some glue in there to join the two halves together. And that will just give it a nice uh, strong bond with the foam rather than with the paint. Just got a block of foam, but you could just use a scrap just to take to take the surface of paint off. It doesn't take a lot of work. And you want to do the inside edge of that as well. Now, now that I've lightly sanded the paint off, I've got it flipped over the other way now, uh, just so that I can keep an eye on the wires and make sure that they don't get glued in anywhere uh, and that they stay in the slot. For my wings, I'm going to use hot glue. I know a lot of people will say that epoxy might be better, and I think epoxy is great as well. Uh, I like the hot glue because it's, uh, it's, it's quick, it's strong. And uh, let's give that a go now. Squeeze that together nice and tight while it's drying. Alright, so with the wings joined together now in the center, it's time to put in the strengthening rods. Uh, and I've actually pulled the servos back out a little. So there is actually a square in the center here so that I can run them over the top and then down through the center. And then that way we can glue in that the rod through into the wing and not, not have those wires glued in there permanently if we have to change that out. So we'll give that a squirt of glue and get those guys in there. Okay, so we've been able to push that down into the into the foam and leave enough of a gap so that if we pull through now the servo wires, they can still sit flush. Okay. 
What I will do is actually run a sheet of white tape just through the white section there just to keep those uh, covered up and protected. And I don't have any orange tape right now but uh, well, I might actually cover that up too if I can get hold of some uh, orange wing tape. And now we've got a nice single point of contact into the plane. So the final touch here in the middle is the plate that holds the screw in and we might just glue that in. One thing you may consider on this joint here is just running a, one uh, coat of packing tape uh, although the glue is a good strong join, the packing tape is, uh, is also a nice touch as well. I'll be running clear on mine. So the next step is to put the horizontal stabilizer in and you'll see that there is a slot in the top to run that through and that keys in. But what I might do is before I glue that into place is to fit in the horn. So the same procedure as before, plate on top, horn underneath. And I think I'll put the heads through the top of this one as well. Before I fit the fin, I'm going to put on the control horns onto the end of the rods. And again with the paint on this bottom section here, which will make contact with the foam, I'll just give that a quick sand as well. So now with the horizontal stabilizer glued in, you can test fit the vertical stabilizer. Just making sure that the rod is out of the way on the other side. And that the rudder is going to swing freely. So the last piece of the tail is the aerials. You have to, we have to cut those off and stick them in. So now that that's cut off, there is a, a leading edge to that and a trailing edge. One last control horn onto the rudder. Alright guys, well that is the end of really all of the glue and screw. Just the one screw for the wing left. And uh, I've bound this by running the Turnergy receivers on the Turnergy 9X. And each one of the servo leads and gears are numbered one through to six and I've just plugged those straight in one two three four five six the other plug is to the wing so with the receiver bound and plugged in uh, that's it we'll tuck that inside and you want to make sure you do that 
before you attach the wing otherwise you won't be able to open the hatch so channel 5 is actually going to be your hatch and channel 6 is running the gear and I'll show you the setup on my transmitter in a second so let's tuck that in there Make sure there's enough space for the wing plug to go into. Let's uh, fit the wing. Alright, so one plug. It's a bit difficult to do one handed. Make sure it's well seated in there. One of the wing in first. Ah. One last finishing touch before we get into the electronics is that of course the exhaust off the front. So we'll glue those in. Alright guys, before we put the, the final touch, the prop and the spinner on, I just want to have a quick look at the electronics. One of the really cool things about this plane is the hatch. Running the stock Turnergy 9X, what I've done is I've assigned the hatch, which is channel 5, to one of the auxiliary channels here through the mix, or through the auxiliary. And let's have a look at that. So if you remember, we bound that beforehand and I've mixed the auxiliary channel. And up she goes. So with that up, you can add the flight battery inside. And again, dial all the way down. Brings that down. Got the gear set on the standard, the gear switch. I'm going to have a look at that now. The nose wheel is also steerable, and that works off the rudder channel. You can adjust that inside with a little grub screw. So with the battery back out again now, it's time to put the, the last touch on the prop and spinner. And the spinner has a keyed slot which needs to go onto the drive one way first then the prop pushes up snug against the spinner put the washer and nut and using a 10 mil spanner you want to tighten that up And the final touch is two screws. Thanks for watching guys. I hope the build video has been helpful. I uh, hope it's been informative. 
Thanks, guys.